Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, Siriana Tarot. This is going to be a reading for the collective for all signs for November 2nd, 2020. I hope everybody is surviving um, this pretty crazy um, period that we're going through with Mercury and Mars in retrograde and this beautiful full moon in Taurus. Um, with energies of uh, um, Uranus, with Black Moon Lilith, lots of healing going on. Um, lots of cards about healing came up in the pre-shuffle. So I expect um, that many of you guys have um, shed tears. Um, I certainly know that I have, but I feel as if thing, you know, that energetic release is actually coming to an end. Like I'm feeling this sense of renewal, um, getting ready for this next season and this time of change. So, um, I hope everybody's doing well. Just remember that I've got your back and that you're not alone, um, during this time. All right. Um, so just a real quick reminder, um, anything you need to know is in the description box down below about private readings, the decks that I'm using. Um, also, I'm just going to ask that you like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And let's go ahead and jump into this. What messages does the collective need to hear for November 2nd, 2020? Messages for the collective, November 2nd, 2020. I'm going to continue with an eight card spread um, from last week. All right. Ooh. Okay, so I'm going to lay out all the cards here first. See how they look. Okay. All right, overall energy here, we do have the Wheel of Fortune. This is a beautiful reminder that when we are born, this is when we step onto this wheel. There are certain faded stops along with certain relationships that we are meant to um, meant to go through, that we are meant to have in our lives. Some of them are just for a minute, some of them are for a whole chapter, and some of them are lifelong. Okay, but this is a beautiful sign because there are ebbs and flows. And when this card comes out in the upright, this is definitely a period, a flow period. Things are going to start moving in your favor. Okay, so that's good energy. That's fixed energy. That is um, Taurus, Leo, Aquarius, and Scorpio. I'm just going to fix this. It's bothering me. All right, I hope that's okay with you guys okay so the first card out is the four of pentacles this is capricornian energy um the four of pentacles in the tarot is known as the miser somebody holding on too tightly so some of you may be holding on too tightly to a relationship it could be a job it could also just be the old ways of being but when it's in the reverse this is telling me that in that release and many of you guys, as I was talking about and picking up in the introduction, just as myself, as you guys have released old, way, old ways of thinking, um, doing shadow work, really getting to the root of you know what might have been blocking you, whether that's in love or abundance, releasing that, sort of going with the flow, you know, we get the three of pentacles energy where everything is going to start coming together. It's beautiful because you have the Four of Cups clarifying the Four of Pentacles. Now, the Four of Cups, when it's in the upright, is about rejecting. It's about being closed off. Someone may have been rejecting you. Some of you may have been, and as, as I myself also have been, um, with this full moon, forgiving ourselves, moving on from past rejections, um, hurts or pains, and really doing this healing work, this shadow work, getting to the root of what has been bothering you. 
Um, and I just, I want to urge you guys, if you work with angels or your spirit guides, just ask even spirit, please give me a sign. What is it that I need to know? And I promise that you will get a very clear answer. Okay. This happened to me this very recently where I was asking a question, please, I need help. I need a sign. And, um, I almost, I don't log on to Facebook very often and I did and boom, exactly what I wanted to know showed up as a picture in my face. Everything came together. So make sure that you are open. Okay. Make sure you are open and you are ready to release what no longer serves you past hurts, disappointments, forgiving yourself, forgiving others. And then this is what's going to ultimately allow you to move on. Four of cups in reverse is becoming emotionally available. Many of us have blocks that we never even knew, or we thought we had healed and cleared. And this mercury retrograde in Scorpio was definitely the purpose here was to rip off some old scabs and to watch us bleed <laughs> figuratively, right? So that we could heal them once and for all. Okay. And I know many of you are feeling and tapping into that energy as, as long as much as I am too. So the next card out, we have the King of Pentacles, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. So some of you guys might be dealing with an earth sign. For some of you guys, this might have to do with a father figure, um, or it may have to do with somebody that you are married to, or you thought you were going to marry. Okay. Someone or something that brought you stability. Spirit doesn't want you to give up on this. Okay. So it may not be necessarily this person coming back to you, but that your stability is important and nobody can shake that nobody can rock that as long as you are in touch with your higher self your inner wisdom okay and you really know where you stand and a lot of the shadow work that we've been doing and a lot of the the wounds that we've been asking to address and redress <laughs> really clean out any sort of infection there it's really funny they're showing me a vision of a an old like a nurse like a wartime nurse but like civil war area war, world war one era really like redressing wounds getting in deep digging out the infection yes it's painful but then redressing them so that true healing can take place okay and clarifying the king of pentacles we have the page of pentacles in reverse some of you were feeling as if you weren't ready for this but spirit's really telling you, yes, you were prepared. And there may have been stops and starts along your journey, either in relationship or in your job or in your spiritual journey, whatever it might be. But spirit's saying you indeed do have the strength. You have the fortitude. You have this king of pentacles energy. You have the resources internal and you're capable of attracting the external resources to really get yourself and get this, whatever it is, off the ground. Now we get the three of pentacles. This is in reverse. So there is a choice to be made. Many of you were, had your energy that was redirected. Okay. Or was you were giving your time and your energy away to someone or something that wasn't benefiting you. Now for many of us, especially in the United States, as we're sort of ramping up for the political, uh, for the elections and that sort of thing, we're getting lot bombarded with lots of different news and lots of fear-based news from both sides. So for many of you, it's about really closing up that energetic field, um, really healing. I'm um, sorry, healing's not the word I want to use. I'm um, really doing that sort of patchwork to, to insulate yourself, to protect yourself. I couldn't get that word out. I'm sorry. To protect yourself from energies, from unwanted energies, because really what this King of Pentacles is telling me here and Spirit saying your inner strength is um, you have the inner strength and um, the ability to move through this, um, to move to move easily through and gracefully through your journey. But you do have to be aware of what isn't coming together for you and why. And for many of you, it's because there's like a leaky aura or you're allowing yourself to get sort of swept up into this fear-based and this anxiety, um, even apocalyptic type thinking that, you know, that many of us, not only in the United States, but all over the world are being sort of um, are being bombarded with. Okay. 
Um, and they do want me to let you know that it is, you know, this is a method of control. Now I'm not, a, I'm not a huge conspiracy theorist here, but you know, keeping you off balance emotionally and psychologically is a method of control in, you know, in, in abusive, psychologically abusive relationships. And then also oftentimes, you know, media and governments tend to do this. So, you know, it's important that you do find your inner strength. You understand that you have what it takes to move through this gracefully and easily. Okay. So something not coming together, we get that frustration. We get this backlash. We get this toxicity. We get this mess. We get this Aries energy, this Aries retrograde energy in the five of wands. You know, there's a lot of fighting and many of you guys may even see this on the news. You might see it within your communities. Um, the full moons particularly too, um, you know, brings about a lot of sort of aggression. Um, oftentimes, you know, crime rates go up around the time of the full moon. Um, you know, I don't know about this year, but, um, but in general, and also we've just got a lot of people that don't have this excess energy and they don't know how to get rid of it. Um, and it may also be something that's happening internally. You guys, if you're feeling anxiety, this is an excess of energy that needs to be channeled into something creative, something powerful, something healthy. So many of you guys might be still feeling and reeling from that. Okay. Um, and then we have the six of swords. So the six of swords in reverse, this is this Libra, Gemini, Aquarius energy. Um, it really could be someone or something that's coming back to you. Um, the seven of cups is clarifying the six of swords. It may be quite confusing. So again, it's really important that you have this king of pentacles energy. You really sit in your power. You find your stability. Now we still have mercury retrograde. It's going to end, um, November 3rd, November 4th. Um, and then, um, and then, you know, but we really don't come out of the shadow period until this new moon in Scorpio, which is going to be on the 14th of November. So I do, um, I do expect that some of you guys are still going to be, um, faced with triggers and rehashing wounds, um, from your past. Again, remember also we have Aries and Chiron, which was aspecting this full moon, I believe, and is really bringing up childhood wounds and doing inner child work. So some of you guys, you might be in the midst of that. Um, and if you are, I hope you find, you know, solace and peace in this message that, you know, it is really all of this intensity that we're experience, um, experiencing will be calming down. We will be moving forward and that things really will get better. The Seven of Cups is Piscean energy, although it can represent Cancer or Scorpio as well. And it is about having many choices. And so, you know, you might have someone coming back to you from your past that's going to sort of throw off your inner compass. Um, and it's really important that you are very grounded, King of Pentacles energy. I just keep going back to this, that you ground yourself um, before you make any choices. And if you can put off any choices, until after Mercury goes direct, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and pull some Oracle cards for additional messages for you guys. You know, the Seven of Cups can also be, you know, I'm also getting here, there's a lot that you have been working towards and many of you feel like you've just been treading water or it's been an uphill battle. Don't forget here that we have this wheel of fortune. Things will be turning in your favor. Things are looking up. This is going to be a period of flow for you. And look at that underneath. We have the high priestess. Again, some of you might be dealing with a Pisces or a cancer, um, but really the importance of using your intuition. Don't get stuck in the over analysis of the mental body um, because we do have an ace of cups here, a brand new beginning and a huge blessing in love and refilling your cup and, and achieving emotional balance. So there's a lot of positivity here. You know, that seven of cups very well could be what you thought you had lost, okay, or what you've been working towards, what you thought was never going to really happen, will be coming back to you and it will be showering you with blessings, okay? So that's a really nice message there. All right, and then we get the thinking woman, number 47, yes. So there's that sort of earthy, well, sorry, it's actually, I'm getting more of like a Gemini energy off of it. 
Um, that mercurial energy also, um, the thinking woman, is about strategy. Um, there may be an important female figure in your life. She is about to help you move through this ascension process. So this very well could represent a, a spirit guide of yours, um, one of your ascended masters that's working with you to help you on this ascension process and get you through these really sort of tough and confusing times. Or it could actually be somebody in your life. So next we have the community card, so friends and family, but I'm also picking up on this being your spiritual, you know, the spiritual counsel that's guiding you and helping you through this difficult time. Um, everything will be coming together for you. The community card for me is a lot like the three of cups. Um, it's about celebration. Um, but here we also have these sisters of the season. So understanding that everything has its cycle. And for us who in the Northern Hemisphere who just celebrated Sam, uh, Samhain, um, and sort of the end of summer. And then those of you, those you beautiful people in the Southern Hemisphere who are now celebrating Beltane, you know, just understanding where we are in the cycle of things and just looking to nature as well as a little guide, especially if you're feeling like your inner compass is a little bit thrown off. Understand that there are rules sorry, there are lessons that can be learned from nature and to tell us, help us figure out where we are in the cycle of this relationship, um, our spiritual journey or of our lives. Okay. And then we get woman holding a coin. So wow, beautiful feminine energy coming through here. Um, the divine feminine, uh, especially with uh, black moon Lilith in Taurus, which we were, look at that and I get action at the bottom. So we also have two coming together, the polar opposites and it very similar to what we're seeing here on the high priestess card, the black and the white columns, the black and the white horses. So really being able to, you know, I'm getting this chariot energy as well. You know, these, you know, letting, giving yourself some freedom as well to move forward after releasing this grief and forgiving yourself and doing Doing the work that you guys have been doing. Um, but with this black moon Lilith energy as well, remember it's about, you know, it's about really recovering what you have lost, fighting for what you love, fighting for what you need, and the divine feminine really stepping up, okay, at this time. All right, and really taking like taking a look at where we might have suppressed emotions desires, feelings, wants, or where we may have even been oppressed by somebody else or, you know, in a relationship or in a job and really taking back what's yours. Okay. And it's so, you know, sometimes we don't even realize this, you know, that we've entered into these sort of contracts that aren't beneficial for us. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's tough work with this scorpionic energy. Okay. Although maybe not so much for my dear Scorpios out there. <laughs> and with this action card, I am getting this freedom to move forward. Well, allowing yourself to be a little bit more free because oftentimes there are things that we don't realize that we've been denying ourselves for whatever reason, something that may be taboo. Or we were saying, you know, yes, this is, you're getting all the signals that this relationship, this job, this path is for you, but saying, nah, I can't have that not allowing yourself to have something that is for you. It's time to get rid of that. It's time to release that. All right, look at this. You get faith, beautiful. Um, you know, Hierophant energy. I'm really getting that Taurus energy from this full moon. Have faith that everything is working out exactly the way it's supposed to. And some of you may have given up on a relationship or on a job or a lifestyle or whatever it is you've been working really hard towards. Um, you may have felt like all of that was sort of stunted, um, that it was hopeless, but spirit does say something here is coming back to you. Something that you once dreamed of. Okay. And, um, you're going to be showered with many blessings. So please have faith in the process. All right. And then we get beautiful. We get solitude. Wow. And look at that sword. I see the ace of swords here, but then look at that on top. I see scorpion energy, scorpionic energy, and this full moon behind her. Wow. Full moon in Taurus, really bringing you guys clarity, enlightenment, a new direction and the axis, the Taurus Scorpio axis. You know, there are things that were hidden from you. Um, there are things that need to be transformed and it may not have been an easy transformation, but guess what? Phoenix from the ashes, guys, you're doing it. 
final message for the collective. That's what wants to come out. Look at that. We get Lakshmi. Beautiful. Stop worrying. Everything is going to be fine. Lakshmi is beautiful. She's about abundance. She's about love. This is a very bright future. This is the sun coming out after a dark period, something you'd given up on coming back to you. And I believe this message has been coming through for us um, throughout our readings recently. Um, things are going to speed up for you. Okay, things are going to speed up for you, but something needs to be brought into balance. And for many of you, you may have been feeling like you, you were on this journey on your own and your sort of your soul tribe, your spiritual team was behind you and supporting you throughout this journey. But there are certain things that we have to go through alone. And I know many of us have been feeling alone in this in the last couple of weeks, um, but really there's a purpose to it. Okay. Learning how to get through this stuff on our own to bring and achieve balance so that we can come together okay with us with our soulmate or so things come together for us okay because there was something that was out of balance for us there was something that we needed to walk away from and we're doing that and we're learning those lessons and it's beautiful so thank you guys for listening i hope you have a beautiful day take care